Welcome to Broad Ideas. Hi. Hey. 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 <laughs> uh, y'all, how's everyone? So super good. So super good. So super good too. Rob, <laughs> so super good too. Are you wearing a thermal or a sweatshirt? Or is it a t-shirt? Therm shirt. It's a sweatshirt. Okay. Gigi good, y'all. I'm really into y'all today for some reason. GG good. It's matching your like Get Nashville up, your attire. Vibe. Nashville attire. Mm-hmm. Nashville chic. Okay. Uh, GG good. She was on RuPaul's Drag Race and she was the runner up in season 12. She's Ooh. a new reality show, Avalon TV. She joins us today and let's. In person. Yeah, in person. Yeah. She joins Why us. Why does that sound so shocking? It sounds really <laughs> no, weird. It sounds like you were like, she joins us from outer space Live today. From, <laughs> Live yeah. from set of Avalon TV. <laughs> yeah. No. We, she's about to come on in. Come on in. Come, come on, on in, in y'all. Gigi. <laughs> we should do that every time. Every intro. Every, like, come wave on them in. in. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so happy to have you here. Yes. You are absolutely stunning. Thank you. Thank you. I'm for... so happy to be here. This is so exciting. Aww, yeah. Thanks. Um, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Getting into the mode here. Yeah. Uh, do you do your own makeup? I do. It's incredible. Thank you. I mean, it's a real Every day. skill. Yes. I mean, I would say this is, you know, this... I was like, there's a camera involved. My right. everyday is definitely more so like just SPF and mascara. Oh, really? Yeah. Usually that's the tea. But you know, if I'm on camera, if I'm meeting somebody new or yeah, yeah. that, then I usually do it. Yes. I'm feeling very buffy lately. Oh, buffy. And also always. Wait, but like, <laughs> are you talking Sarah Michelle uh, yes. Geller buffy? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. because like oh, I yeah. grew up now, we said that you were born the year she graduated high school. So you're <laughs> obviously a lot younger than us. Uh-huh. But Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the original movie, have mm-hmm. you ever seen it? I have. Okay, cool. Because that, to me... I have. And you love to love it, but it's, I, it's, it's not, Sarah Michelle. It's Sarah Michelle. It's Sarah Michelle. I get that. She's, that's literally why I went blonde. Really? Oh, that's 100%. amazing. Yes. Oh, my God. 100%. So here's something. The first thing, I think it was the first thing I ever did. Was it the first thing? It was like a glorified background person on Buffy, on Sarah Michelle's <laughs> Buffy. Which episode? I think there was like a fantasy with one of the characters and it was literally oh. insinuating a threesome. Oh, fun. Love I believe that. that's what it was. I'm going to have to double check that. That's so fun. I was if probably you can find like, out the season and episode, I will watch that immediately. Oh my yeah. God. It's probably, I was probably 19 or 20. I'll figure that out. But yeah, for me, Buffy was the movie, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, we okay. appreciate the show. Interesting. Okay. And Sarah Michelle. I take it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Did they do a remake of it? Of Buffy? Yeah. I mean, technically, Sarah Michelle was the remake. She was, yeah, she was but, a remake. But, but not from her did, show. I don't I think they've like done they, a remake. They did of Charmed. They oh, did yes. Charmed. That's, I think, okay. what you're they confusing. Charmed, Were you into yet. Charmed? Love. Right? Ugh, Anything love. like love mystical Charmed. and magical. It's my favorite. And, yes. We're really good friends. I don't know who he was on Charmed, though. Do you? Drew yeah. Fuller. Drew Fuller. Do you oh, know who that is? Um. Yeah, of course. Is he on Charmed? He was on Charmed. Was he the police officer? Wait. No. Hold on. I'm, You're going to pull him up. It's escaping me. It's escaping me. I think he's, he's somebody's beautiful. son. He's beautiful. So, he's so good looking. He's very good looking. Oh, he was someone's son. Yeah. Okay, yes. He was, yes. Um, yes. Leo and Piper's son. Yes. Got it. That sounds right. That's Is right. that who he was? I, don't know, I, I never saw that. I know, but yeah, I, I know. I'm, I've never been a names girl. I've always been a faces girl. It's only faces that do it for me. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Mm-hmm. That's the one. Chris. Yeah, so he's a good friend. But the, all those shows, like, you know, I feel like. Were they both CW? I don't know. But very, anyway, just if, Even if they weren't, vibe. they were very CW. Very CW. Yeah. yeah, so we got a whole vibe. But we want to know your whole story because it's so, you know, fascinating to me and the whole RuPaul, Drag Race, like everything. Yes. We want to know it all. Oh my goodness. So like, Start from tell birth. us your story. From birth. <laughs> from <laughs> coming out. Dark yes. and stormy <laughs> December night. Um, no, yeah, I was I was um, born and, and raised in Evanston, Illinois, which yeah. is kind of Chicago adjacent. And then when I was seven, we moved to Woodstock, Illinois, mm-hmm. which you've ever seen the movie Groundhog Day. Oh, yeah. That was filmed in Woodstock. Oh, my so gosh. So that's like what our town is known for. Groundhog Day is the biggest holiday of the year. It's no oh, way. Ridiculous. Because of the movie. <laughs> like full mascot. Every, wild. That's so um, funny. And yeah, and I 
went through high school and had a great high school experience. Lovely family. My mom's my best friend. Um, she actually made a lot of the costumes that I wore on RuPaul's Drag Race. She's an incredible seamstress. Oh my gosh, like, amazing. It Was that her tour. job? Was she a seamstress growing up or no. just a hobby? I mean, she. I, her job technically is interior designer, which she had done a lot more before her children came along. But um, yeah, she she has her own interior design business and she just like made her Halloween costumes growing up. And then, Ugh. you know, I got into theater and that's, I think, when she really started getting the gears turning and um, she made all the stuff for every production I was in. And um, she actually started making clothes for me in drag when I was like 16. Really? Yes. It's incredible. I started drag very young. Okay. Um, because I had a very accepting and open experience, which I know is not the norm. Mm, and I, right. I'm very lucky to have had that. Um, but that, you know, that led me to go to college and pursue theater further, but more like hair and makeup backstage type type theater. And I hated it. I oh, hated oh, you did? It. Yes. Well, I originally went to college for art education. I was, I really wanted to be a high school art teacher. Okay. Oh my God. And at my school, they do things differently where they have you student teach your second semester freshman year, which thank God, because they put me in a classroom. It was the worst experience of my entire life. I went to school in Decatur, Illinois. And you know, I was like a beauty boy wearing makeup. (laughs) Like (laughs) like, that didn't fly there. So changed majors a bunch of times. Um, I decided to drop out of college my sophomore year. And I was like, I don't know what I want to do, but I know it involves hair and makeup. Mm. And I know LA is probably, I'd never visited LA before, but I knew that it, that was probably where I needed to be. Yeah. Right. And yeah, got to LA. I did that for a while, the hair and makeup on set and on music videos. Did you? I did. And um, I hated that too. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, come to think of it, I hate hair and makeup. Yeah. But I, that's the thing is I love hair and makeup, but right. I, hate, I only love doing it on myself. Oh, interesting. Right. Okay. I, I get like, that. Yes. Yeah. And you know, I'd been doing drag since I was like 15, since, yeah, 15. And um, I've always loved it. Never thought it would be a career of any kind. I just, you know, it would always be with me. And then, um, you know, after quitting like five different jobs in LA within my first eight months, <laughs> I had been going out and working as a go-go dancer in drag. Amazing. And so, you know, I'd be surrounded by all these like muscle gays, like in underwear, and I'd just be dressed (laughs) as like a clown with a dunce cap, you know, (laughs) dancing to to whoever's playing. Um, And then auditions came out for RuPaul's Drag Race. Ah. And I had never auditioned seriously before. Um... But I was like, you know, I'm just going to do it because I love the show and I just think it would be fun to be on. And I know that's kind of the golden ticket. You know, you get I did. I was kind of lost and I was like, I would be happy doing drag forever and always. That's like right. the perfect job. So I got on RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever, ever had. Yeah. Wow. It's incredible. Wild. Yeah. Can can we go back a little yeah, bit? Yeah, sorry. Wow. No, I no, no, just no. Steamrolled that. No, no, we wanted the no, whole thing. No, we wanted the whole story. <laughs> Absolutely. But so much comes up for me in the questions of like when you were young mm-hmm. and yeah. what that was like yeah. for you because you know, um having children, it's it's so you know, it's so tender. Mm-hmm. Like what kids wants are and what their desires are and like how to nurture them properly, all that fun stuff, totally. right? Yeah. But it sounds to me like you grew up in such an w- inclusive mm-hmm. environment. And I'm just curious, like, when did it start for you? When were you like, I want to, you know. Explore. I, exp- yeah. I don't see, I I have, my memory, first of all, my short-term memory is awful. Like, mind of a gold. I can relate. And I can't remember anything. This is so sad, but like prior to the age of, eight or nine. Like, I really can't remember much. Mm. Um, but, you know, my mom, best friend, tells me everything. She And we we talk about it a lot. And I know that when I was like three or four was when my parents really started noticing that I had, n- I just didn't have any interest in the boy stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, at all. I have two older brothers and I wanted nothing to do with anything that they were doing. Right. Um, and I would just gravitate towards anything that had hair and anything that, <laughs> anything that I could, yeah. you know, I'd be making napkin gowns for my mom's old dolls and stuff. And um, 
I don't think it was ever really seen by my parents as like a concern. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was something that they took me to see a psychologist about when I was little who diagnosed me with gender identity disorder, Mm. which is no longer a thing. Oh, Um, wow. But at at the time, there was such little information about that. And, you know, I think at that age, my parents just kind of decided to let me do whatever I wanted to do. And I think my dad was a little more reluctant, but he just was kind of like, you know, I'll close my eyes. You do whatever you got to do. And my mom was just, I mean, she bought me all the dolls and she used to like bribe me to audition for summer theater with American girl dolls. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Like, (laughs) like, I, you know, she would let me do her hair for church on Sundays Mm. and, um, I don't know. She was just such church a church big... on Sundays. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, I know. I know. Of course, uh, we're like, okay, flag that. <laughs> you know, flag like, that. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 When I was a kid, we we went to church, and it wasn't like a serious thing, but mostly just because my mom sang in the choir, and so okay, sweet. Yeah. I was I was going to listen to my mom sing in the choir. Yeah, you know? yeah. That was and like I wasn't paying attention. I was just drawing in my little notepad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I still can't pay attention to anything, but um, <laughs> yeah, and. So she was just a really big supporter without even really trying to be. Mm -hmm. It just was easy for her, I think. And that really led me to discovering myself at a Mm -hmm. very early age. I Mm -hmm. knew, I mean, I've known exactly who I was since before I could talk, I think. There's never really been, you know, up until like middle school times when the bullying started happening. I think that's maybe when my parents were a little bit more concerned about the way I was dressing and doing this. And of course, my brothers would give me shit in middle school and would be they? like, do you have to wear that? Oh. So you my were already- are talking about you. Uh-huh. Were you already dressing? So when did you start dressing in school? Um, you know, I didn't, I, so I didn't transition until the pandemic. Right. Oh, oh. yeah. Um, okay. I think I was kind of, you know, I, I was just naturally drawn to more feminine fit clothing. Like, I was like, I need the skinniest jeans. Well, your yeah. body. <laughs> I mean. I know. It, it would have been a waste. If you, I mean, your body's Thank insane. You. But yeah. Well, that was, I mean, my body was my biggest insecurity. Oh, wow. Growing my my whole upbringing. I just was like, I felt like I looked malnourished and I felt mm. like skin and bones. And, you know, at the time, I, I didn't really, I knew who I was, but I did not know I didn't know that transgender was a thing. Right. I didn't know there was, I didn't know drag was a thing. Right. You know, at this point in high school, I, you know, I just didn't, I didn't know. So in my mind, I was a boy mm-hmm. who was just way too skinny and uh-huh. scrawny and like awkward and lanky, but like very the class clown, you know, I was always in really good spirits. Um, but I think, you know, it all comes with media mm-hmm. and, Thanks to the media, I started to see other people who were like boys wearing makeup. And mm-hmm. that kind of led to me discovering drag, which led to me discovering, like I, I learning what the word non-binary meant and, um, you know, feeling weird about putting that kind of label on it. But knowing that that's exactly how I was feeling at the time because mm-hmm. I hadn't heard <laughs> about trans people before. Right. And something really struck in me the first time I ever heard about a transgender person, which was Amanda Lepore, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who is still, I think, one of the most visually stunning creatures on this planet. And she's been so unapologetically herself for so long. And that really, it was something that like I kind of filed away in the back of my mind. It was always there, but it still wasn't at the forefront. So I went through college, um, and honestly, the first couple years of living in L.A., just kind of, you know, a little boyish. My hair was shaved on the sides. It was, you know, I was just like a beauty boy. Mm-hmm. I was like one of those beauty boys, you know. <laughs> yeah. And um, and that was fine. And I didn't have a problem with that. But then, you know, the pandemic really, <laughs> really lended itself to a lot of self-discovery yeah. out there oh, sure. for everybody. Sure. And you know, when you have to sit with yourself for that long and really get to know yourself a lot more than you did before, mm-hmm. um, you you learn some things. And I just realized, you know, like, oh, I just don't, like, I want to, I want to, I want to be a girl every day. Like, I want to, <laughs> this is just, 
I am, you yeah. know, I just, I am a girl every day. So I'm going to, that's when I decided to grow my hair out. And, you know, the pandemic was so sheltered and I didn't, this was right after RuPaul's Drag Race had aired as well. Mm. Oh, wow. So That's a lot at it's once. A, it's a lot. But it's a lot. I kind of um, credit the lockdown for a lot of my sanity, actually, because wow. if you think about it, these girls will go through the, they'll go through the ringer on mm-hmm. the show, first mm-hmm. of all. Mm-hmm. And then the day that it airs, they are on the road and they are like every single night, yeah. another club, another club, you know? Right. And there's, they don't get to stop and like process. And honestly, I think a lot of times evolve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as it was kind of like the incline, the roller coaster went up and then it just kind of gets stuck at the top. Yeah. And I didn't have, I didn't interact with anybody, right. you know, any of my fans, I was at home completely. Um, we did on Zoom. I don't know. I just didn't get to meet anybody. I didn't get to perform on a stage for like two years after that. And um, yeah, I just, I, I discovered who I was. And th- within those two years, I did a lot to aid that. And I mm-hmm. started taking hormones and I switched from pills to injections and oh, wow. I got full facial feminization surgery and didn't really? tell anybody. <laughs> what Wait, that what does that entail? So facial feminization surgery is yeah. different for everybody who gets it. Okay. Um, it's essentially just, depending on what you want and what you desire, it's just changing features of your face that are more masculine and, you know, feminizing them. So for me, it was my brow bone. I had a very prominent brow bone. And so I got that hacked off. And, <laughs> oh my gosh. And um, She's like, it's yeah. gone. gone. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's, there's yeah. a lot more than just that that goes into it, but... Um, it was, it's, it made the biggest, I was like shocked. It made the biggest difference and something that was so subtle, but like automatically made me feel like I looked like I had gone through puberty as a woman instead mm. of as a man. And, um, you know, on top of that, hormones are, let me tell you about the medical mysteries. Of Please do. Hormones <laughs> because it is baffling. I've like, it's, I've never experienced something that is so like, in the moment, it, it changes everything about you. Mm-hmm. And you can see your face changing every single day. And you can see your body. Oh, my God. You see your body changing every day. And my it, it felt like there was a door in my mind that opened up. There was like another room back there. Uh, and wow. it was like, is this how women think? You know? <laughs> like, you know, it's it's wild. It just is I crazy. feel so much smarter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I, I owe a lot to RuPaul's Drag Race and yeah. honestly to the pandemic, which sometimes I feel really guilty and terrible for saying. But it without that, I think I probably would not have had this discovery, at least right. not quite as soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah. But you got to kind of do it on your own terms, yeah. behind closed doors, so mm-hmm. to speak, and just fully go through it all. And I yeah. can't imagine being in public, going through all, taking all those hormones because like hormones are a bitch, man. Yeah. Bitch. Like, Especially the self-inflicted one. Oh well, my God. Yeah, I wonder so if you had to inject yourself? Um, I mean, it's, a, you know, it's a, an emotional roller coaster. I yeah. imagine there's nothing that quite compares to actual natural hormones that are being produced. But I, I think there's know. a completely different, <laughs> it, it's a different thing because you're replacing your hormones entirely. Right, Because you also right. take testosterone blockers. So there's no testosterone being wow. produced. And then you get all the female hormones. So you're essentially just going through puberty. Right. So it is what I imagine going through puberty <laughs> as a little girl. Right. Is like. Yeah. Yeah. But and without the pimples. Without the pimples. And the that's periods. nice. And, without, and the periods. Yes. I mean, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> and you know? what are your thoughts? I'm very curious because this is a conversation and obviously it's a touchy one. So mm-hmm. if you don't want to talk about it, no worries. But what are your thoughts with the children taking hormones or transitioning? It, it's not. The, people just think it's so dangerous. Mm-hmm. And it's really not. Because it's not like these doctors are strapping these kids down and giving them full facelift and cheek implants. Oh and like, and hormones yeah. are very safe. It's a delicate thing. So it's if a doctor is aiding you through that, mm-hmm. it's going to be done the right way. Mm-hmm. What I do know is children know who they are. And you know that as well as parents, I'm sure. Like right. children, they, they their personalities start to show like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And 
you know, if they're lucky, they get to grow up in a place where they can explore that. Mm -hmm. Um, And if they're not, which are, is the case of a lot of people that I know, um, they kind of have to fight to figure that out on their own. And that ultimately makes it worse for them in the future. It makes it hard, not worse. It makes it harder for them in the future. And it's a, it's a much more arduous journey. Mm -hmm. And I just think like, it's, it's, it's harmless. Like there's, there's nothing like let your child explore these things. The other thing is ch- children, you won't, you can't give a child gender affirming surgery until they're of, and it, they will have gone through at least most of high school by the time you can even explore that. Right. And even then oh, that's that right? really risky. Right. So it's usually waiting until 18, um, I don't, I have, it's, I've rarely heard of cases that happened before then. Yeah, it's, well, I think that what's going on is in the news, it's so polarized, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. there's the two different camps. And it's so hard to know, like, let's say you watch the two different stations. Yeah. I won't say what they are, but we all know what <laughs> they are. You, you see it being like, this is happening to your children at school without mm. you knowing. And then you see the other camp that's like, we're doing this to help the children. Yeah. And it's so hard because I think that everybody's fed so much misinformation. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm just curious, like your experience having gone through that. Ho, ho, hold your phone and never drop it again. With Spider Grip, the phone grip that won't slip. Looking for that perfect gift to buy this holiday season? Well, look no further. It is time to grip the freedom. Spider Grip rotates 360 degrees, props up as a stand. It even lays flat, locked in place. Just ask the big man in red. That's right. There's no reason to drop your phone in that green bean casserole. I've done it before. You need a phone grip that's made in the USA by the elves at the North Pole. You'll be so pleasantly surprised with just how comfortable it is. Spider Grip's also functional and durable, and it's great for adults and for kids. Just head on over to spidergrip.com and share a little love. When it comes to phone grip, Santa will tell you that Spider Grip is number one. That's spidergrip.com, S P I I D E R G R I I P.com. Two eyes in spider and two eyes in grip. Use code IDEAS at checkout and get 30% off and free shipping. Happy holidays from Spider Grip. Do you want children? You know, I I never really wanted children ever. <laughs> I I always was like I'm going to be like an uh, an old starlet who's, you know, <laughs> got her big powder puffs and is just living her life, um which I still think I'm going to be, but you know, I I have a boyfriend now and and I've kind of not that we're thinking about having children or anything, but it's it's come up in my mind and I think I'd be a really great parent. And I think the Mm -hmm. idea of raising a child into a person that is, you know, the best that they can be is so crazy. Like that's so crazy and special. Mm -hmm. And I know I would do it right. That's the thing is I would do it exactly the way that my mom raised me. Mm. And um, I don't know. I think letting your child be who they are and grow up the way they want to grow up Mm -hmm. and naturally do is suicide prevention. Right. That's what that is. Right. Right. Because the reason that these kids are ending their own lives and and Mm. doing harmful things is because they haven't been given space to explore what they want to be. So all that they think about themselves is that it's wrong and that they are wrong for being this way. You can't change. You really, you can't. You can't just change yourself. Mm-hmm. You can send someone to a conversion therapy camp, which you can't actually don't. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, you can do that but work. it's not, you know, it's like, it's, it, you can't just change somebody like that. Right. You can't. So it's not even worth it to try. Right. Just right. let them, let them guide you. Be. Yeah. Let them guide you. Well, you had such exactly. a supportive, you know, your mom being so supportive, I think was probably obviously a blessing. Yeah. And I know there, like you said, a ton of kids out there who don't have that. Yeah. Do you think that, you know, now it, I don't know if it's just because it's talked about more, but it does seem like more and more kids taking the hormones and the conversion things. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's definitely, I can tell you right now, it's not that it's happening more. It's just that 
now there's more information about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there were just as many kids, you know, in generations past that felt the same way, but right. did not have the words and the language to mm-hmm. express it or the freedom to express it. Yeah. And now that there's so many of these personalities online that are living authentically, it's giving these kids permission and a window into what could be. And you know what? Sometimes, sometimes kids experiment with these things. And sure, maybe they find a different routes along the way. And this one's not right. So they go this way and that one isn't quite right. And so, but that's the whole, that's what growing up is. You have to be able to try these things in order to know what works best for you. And I still think we're lacking a lot of terminology and information on this. And I think, you know, in the future, it should just be an innate thing, you know, that it shouldn't even be talked about. Mm-hmm. Right. It's just like, do you do, go ahead. Yeah. Do you. It just is. Just go yeah. play. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> right. And what about your brothers? Like, how are they oh, with they're this? Amazing. They're so <laughs> amazing. I love them. They're my biggest fans. Um, <laughs> they used to live in Wisconsin together. And um, one of them is a drummer, really, really talented musician. The other one is a designer, industrial designer and makes, you know, anything. He's a, he did works with wood. Just they're, they're very creative. Um, and they're just, I don't know, they're great. I think in high school and middle school, my oldest brother never really cared, but my middle brother sometimes would just get a, I think he really was just worried about me. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just sometimes came across as, you know, like, what are people going to think of you and that? But I think, you know, you got to spin that. He was really just concerned for me and, they, yeah, they're amazing. They worked my booth at RuPaul's Drag Con. <laughs> and I had like eight hour lines every day and they were talking to each and every person and Aww, learning people's amazing. life stories and crying. And oh, yeah, they've just been amazing. And in high school, you did mention that that's when the bullying or started. Or was it middle school? Middle or school. middle school. Tell us about that. In middle school, it was hard because like I said, I, there was no, if if I had the words to describe who I was, I would have stood on the lunch table and been like, just so y'all know, (laughs) this is who I am. You know, go fuck yourself. (laughs) But I didn't have that. So I think to other kids, I did look confused because I kind of was. You know, I was very confident, but I was just a little peculiar kid. (laughs) And so there were, yeah, there were just these awful boys who would do these terrible things to me. I've been like pushed down flights of stairs. I've been (sighs) pantsed in gym. Someone tried to drown me at the pool one time. Jeez. Yeah. That's not bullying. That's It's terrible. Attacks. terrible. But you know, we're in sixth grade at this point. So it's just boys being boys, you know. Um, And I remember I, I was always the one who got in trouble. Always. Every single time. I was the one that was called down to the principal's office. Mother was called to pick me up. Um, You know, my parents never really disciplined me wrongfully Mm -hmm. for things that I didn't do. I think they always chose to believe me. Mm -hmm. um, And they always disciplined me in a really calm manner, which I think is, you know, really helpful (laughs) for a child who's already really scared. And, you know, I... Also, I'm not the brightest bulb in the pack. I just <laughs> never, school has never been my thing. I find it really hard to pay attention. Never passed a math class. Like, it, I, it's not for me. And so. That doesn't make a bulb bright. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that is true. Um, but yeah, I don't know. School, middle school was, at the end of middle school is when I learned about, like, I was like, oh, I can do these other girls hair. And mm. I can, they can be my ally. And they're the ones that are dating these boys. Wow. And so I was like, okay, great. I'm going to make friends with all the cheerleaders. And I'll do their hair for prom. I'll do their makeup for prom. And, you know, I'll be the, the token gay. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and it was great. And I actually made really great friends with a lot of these girls. And I was completely left alone in high school. It was not a problem Amazing. at all. And, you know, in high school, it was nobody even cared. Like I, at one year I was dating the captain of the basketball team and, you know, it was like, didn't matter. Right. We have to remember she's a different generation too. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, because in our day and age, it was a little bit more backwards. For sure. You know, like 
there were so many people that silently went through what they were going through. And you heard, like we had best friends, obviously, that were gay and dating guys, but it wasn't as out there. Yeah. It wasn't acceptable. For sure. Still, mm-hmm. right? Like it was acceptable with us, obviously. Yeah, but yeah. like, you know, just... Times have changed yeah. where... Mm-hmm. Wait, you said you dated the captain of the basketball? Is that what you said? Just yeah, said? very yeah. briefly, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good <laughs> for you. He's tall. <laughs> he's, he's tall. <laughs> right, but you're right. It is, you know, I think it's it's a beautiful time where... I mean, look, there's two sides always, but like it is a beautiful time for people feeling free, more like free to be themselves. But what I notice about you is your confidence and your self-assurance, like who you are, like exudes from you. Like you're like, just like you said, you would have stood on the tabletops and been like, this is who I am. And I think that really like is a huge ode to your parents, your mom, everything Mm -hmm. feeling so supported in this. And that's the biggest thing. And I think it's beautiful. It's crazy. I mean, my my mom has... You know, as soon as I mentioned her name on the show, she got 40,000 followers on Instagram. And, <laughs> you know, she's got her own fandom. And she would call me all the time and, and be like, I connected with these parents. And I've connected mm-hmm. with all these people. And, you know, I met this dad who just said that he was so against what his child was doing. And it just made him sick to his stomach. And mm-hmm. then he watched me talk about my mom and you know, learned a little bit more about it. And he's like, and he's now he's a complete supporter of his child. And, you know, there's so many incredible stories and also heart-wrenching stories that yeah. people have shared with my mom um, just to thank her. And I, I think it's, I don't know, it's great because, you know, parents don't often get a lot of the credit, <laughs> especially, you know, when their kids turn out right. And I, I don't think that she really understood the gravity of how amazing she is as a parent. And so I think being able to hear that and actually like see the numbers <laughs> and know the gravity <laughs> of that was really special for her. Yeah. What about mental health? Like for you, because you said one of the ways um, in which people, you didn't, I'm saying this wrong, but basically <laughs> the gist of it was that the suicide rates, Mm -hmm. right, with trans kids or trans in general go up when they don't have the support that they needed. So was that something that you struggled with even though you had the support? How was your mental health during all of this? I think, I mean, there's there's a lot that has to do with mental health. And Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is genetic. A lot of it is something that is not learned or absorbed. It's something that you're just born with and have to grow and deal with. And I, you know, I've had my fair share of of that side of things, but you know, another side of it is trauma and and your environment and your family and the people that you surround yourself with. And, you know, I'm I'm so thankful that even though I may have felt, you know, I it never really got to that point for me, but mm. I was a I was a really happy kid and I was really confident and I think most of all, it was mostly the confusion that was really frustrating. Mm-hmm. And I, it was hard to move past that sometimes. But, um, you know, if I didn't have the family that I had, I, who knows what would have happened. Right. And, you know, I know kids who went through that and didn't make it out on the other side. And mm. it's just awful. And it all, to me, aside from the, the other side of it, it all really boils down to who, who you're surrounding yourself with. Yeah. And I think... Um, you know, that's where chosen family is really important. Mm -hmm. And I think there's so many people that have no idea how important that is and how, how realistic it is to find and how it can completely save your life, you know, and it's, it's just crucial. You can, you can find a family away from your family. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different kind of family, whether you have a good relationship with your, your natural born family or not you can find that relationship among others. Yeah. Yeah. We, 100%. Yeah, we talk about that all the time. Like our chosen like sisters, mm-hmm. you know, and they really totally. help lift you up and get you through things, yeah. you know, but it seems like you have both. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, I, I I count my blessings every day. Yeah. I do. I'm very lucky. Um, But yeah, I think it, they're two completely completely different types of families. Of course. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's, yes. it's, yeah, I'm very lucky to have both. Yeah. I mean, but even like, 
and partly I think it is a survival story of like going through what you did in middle school and, mm-hmm. but still being who you are. And like, you, you just like, you really are just so shiny and bright and like, <laughs> you. you know, really though, you know, and Aww. to have endured that. And I know that that could really have an effect on something, but you just, it seems like you're just like, well, you know, that happened and you kept going and mm-hmm. look where you are now and yeah. you kept pursuing and with all this I've support. never really taken things too seriously. That's another big it's a gift for other people. To, I, I mean, and I know it's so much easier said than done, but yeah, don't take it. So don't take life so seriously. I'm mm-hmm. a big fan of that. Yeah. You know, I also think that there's something to it when you speak about like being at that age and being confused and yeah. not being frustrated, for, mm-hmm. frustrating for you. Mm-hmm. I think so many more people, if they just took that, could identify with it because I think we all grow up and there's this kind of narrative that like, you need to know who you are. Like, mm-hmm. who are you? And yes, I think we're all born who we are, but I think that there is an unraveling. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And I think there's a lot of confusion growing up, especially during puberty or high school or twenties. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're still in them, but twenties were brutal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Whether it's gender, whether it's career, whether it's romance, whatever it is, I feel like we all as human beings can relate to the fact that it can be really confusing Yeah, of like that, who am I? And Mm -hmm. I think maybe we don't know until we're done. No. (laughs) You're never going to reach your final form. Right. I think evolution and growth is so important. And I wish that it was explored more. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, you know, I remember someone on my season, I think it was Heidi in Closet on my season. One time she she said, if you're not growing, you're dead. That's right. I was like, yeah, it's true. It's true. You know. Absolutely. You got to water yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. like (laughs) But when people say that, like, you need to know who you are. I'm like, do you? Because no, isn't don't. it forever changing? And it's a like, learned thing. Yeah, and yeah. don't we just need to know how we feel today? Yes. As opposed to right. this like grand mm-hmm. idea that you have to have this, you know, declaration of your who am mm-hmm. I? And I do love that for you, you're like, yeah, different people can be fluid with it. It yeah. can change. Right. Yeah, it's ever changing. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they, you talk about stepping stones. Mm-hmm. Like, right. I've, I think I've come out like, Five or six different times in my life. You know? <laughs> it's like, it just is. And I, I don't even know that I believe I'm in my final stage of coming out. Like, who knows what's next? Right. You know? right. But I know how I feel right now. And I know what has influenced that and what has been completely innate in that. Mm-hmm. And I'm comfortable in it. I'm just comfortable yeah. and I'm happy. That's it. Comfortable. Yeah. Comfortable. Oh. But it also speaks to really being in the present. And that's mm-hmm. a yeah. whole other thing. Yeah. Like you're fully in the present. I hate a coulda, shoulda, woulda. Right. Right. You know? right? Yeah. And that's the biggest lesson. And I teach it to my kid all the time too, you know, mm-hmm. because it's, and I'm still trying. I can't do it. I'm always like somewhere else in my head. Like, yeah. oh. I mean, I can't even Everyone's imagine. trying. Everyone's trying. Everyone's trying. Yeah. And it's not, there's not a parenting handbook. No. <laughs> Gosh. There's no handbook there's for sure, anything. There's no it's, handbook for anything. There's things that can help, but yeah. like, you know, a lot of it is figuring it out. And your relationship it on your with own. your kid is so specific and <laughs> so special. And I don't know, to not nurture that is just crazy. I know. I know. What were we talking We were it's talking about, we don't understand how people... Well, there was someone that told me they didn't want children. And I said, that is the best decision you could have ever made as a mom. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's a mom. Someone that's like, I know myself well enough to know that I don't have what it takes to give a child. I'm like, you're mothering the world that way. Because it's true. You know, (laughs) that's a solid choice. There's still kids being born. Like we're good. Yeah. (laughs) Like we got this. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. You know, and that is, that's a strong, and again, Just speaks to like really knowing, well, who you are in that moment anyway. Mm -hmm. But like being confident with who you are and knowing what you can or not that you can't, but maybe it's not for you and that's okay too. But I think your message is so cool, you know, because you speak so openly about everything in your experience in your life. And I just think it's really admirable and, and beautiful that you can do that, you know. And I think it'll touch a lot of kids or people who do feel confused or conflicted or... And any straight man that looks at you. (laughs) (laughs) 
Broad Ideas is supported by Blissey. So I've been sleeping on this Blissey pillowcase. And let me tell you, I did not know that a pillowcase could feel so good and make such a big difference in my life. It's time to upgrade your sleep with Blissey's award-winning 100% Mulberry Silk pillowcases. The holidays are just around the corner. And if you're looking for the best gift you can give, look no further than a Blissey Silk pillowcase. Blissey pillowcases have really been a game changer for me. Not only, listen, you guys, you know, sometimes you blow dry your hair and you sleep on it and then you get hot in the night and then it gets curly underneath and you wake up and you're like, well, that was a waste. Blissey has solved that. I don't overheat. The curls are at bay. Thank you, Blissey. Blissey silk pillowcases are the best silk pillowcases on the market. They have a ton of different prints and colors and they make great gifts because there's an option for literally anyone. Men love them too. They have over 1.5 million raving fans and you could be next. Try now risk-free for 60 nights at blissey.com slash Rachel and get an additional 30% off. That's B-L-I-S-S-Y dot com slash Rachel and use code Rachel to get an additional 30% off. Give yourself the gift of a good night's sleep with Blissey. It that no. that's gonna yeah. confuse <laughs> the shit the out thing of us. Though there is, <laughs> as for as much negativity that is happening within the community and yeah. towards the community, there's a lot of great things that yes. are happening for the community. I think in in very recent years, a lot of straight men have realized and learned more about what who trans women are and and how they identify and how it's really no different than. Yeah, you know, you can still be straight and date a trans woman, and right. Um, I don't know. I think it's it it's really opening up. I think it really yeah, opened up. Yeah, I agree. Do you, have you dated straight men? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have. Yeah, they're terrible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Awful. Um, oh my god. Yeah, in my that's experience, amazing. that's but, not amazing. That's <laughs> amazing, and we agree. Yeah, yeah, you know, there is, a good straight man is really hard to come by. They yeah. are out there. They I are. Believe, they exist. I don't believe all men are terrible. Yeah. All the ones that I've interacted with yeah. have not been great. But, um, you know, my boyfriend now is, I, I guess he considers himself pansexual. Okay. I think he's kind of dated every type of person under the sun. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's really, it's very affirming to be with somebody who just doesn't even think about it. Doesn't yeah, even right. Doesn't care. Right. It's so nice. But yeah. that's also this generation too. Like we went on a trip not that long ago and someone that's very dear to me, she's what Dakota's like 21. Yeah. And we were talking about these different issues and she got really angry. And she said, um, I just don't even know why these are conversations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do they even matter to bring up? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, that's the difference between us and their generation yeah. is that they're far past this. Yeah. They're like, guys, really? It's it's boring. Like, it's old. It's yeah, boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it old. Yeah. 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 But I do think it does take educating the older folk mm-hmm. because <laughs> it does. It because does. so elderly. <laughs> what? <laughs> Where's the, the seniors? Older. No, the <laughs> senior <laughs> citizens over here. No. Two, three, and two. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, just like every generation, I think obviously the numbers differ, but just like every generation, there's great, great people and there's terrible, terrible people. Yeah. And um, I think it's not impossible to get someone on this end of the spectrum to like creep their way towards being uh-huh. a better person and a more understanding person. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, it's if it takes being outnumbered to happen, <laughs> then for you to realize that, then so be it. Because I think in a lot of cases, we're beyond a conversation Right. There's so many people that are not, you can't convince, you just can't. There's there's really no point in even like arguing because they're not going to hear what you're saying. Right. The hard part about that though is that when you say that, I'm like, okay, well, to each his own, right? Like mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're able to feel how you want. But the hard part about that is the bullying mm-hmm. and the voting and the things that come with that. So it is at a hard time. People are having a hard time with accepting people's beliefs right now because it affects people that they love and care about. Mm -hmm. And I know we've been through that because, you know, I'm not going to get political, but we're very Mm open-minded. And if someone else wants to believe other things, like in my mind, I'm like, that's okay. Like you're allowed to believe that. But then I'm like, Ooh, but is it? Because then you go and you, you, you vote 
Mm. or you pass that on. And then I start to question, oh, is that not okay? You right, know, yeah. it's tough, right? It is, it is tough. But, you know, you like you, you really can't convince some of these people about these things. And I think, like you said, it is okay for people to have differing opinions. That's yeah. just how humanity is. Um, I think a lot of times the opportunity for the other side to learn gets completely shut down mm. when, when, you know, our side completely villainizes immediately instead of being like, would you be open to really having a conversation about it? Yeah. And more often than not, those people are not open to that. And unfortunately, they make up a vast percentage of, you know, the candidates. Um, but it's, it is, I, I really do think it's a matter of time too. Yeah. And just look at what's happened in the last 50 years. Not, I mean, even aside from, from just gender binaries, like, you know, so much has happened in the last 50 years and imagine what's going to happen in the next 50. Um, I just think remaining hopeful and positive is really important, but mm -hmm. also being able to, being able to express your views in a way that is not an attack or yeah. threatening mm -hmm. or, you know, like think, think about what you're going to say. You know, these people, they're opening their ears to you. Like, yeah, right. How are we going right. to, how are we going to get, build the bridge and get across? Right. So you feel open-minded, like in hearing people that might not be fully supportive of, you know, your world and the journey mm -hmm. and everything. Do you yeah, but I can recognize which ones are lost causes mm -hmm. and are just never going to be on our side. And those are right. definitely the people that we have to vote against. I right. mean, I'm not saying that everyone needs to hold hands and be friends. Mm -hmm. Like, right. absolutely not. But um, I just don't think that could ever happen. But it's, you know, it's like there are little pockets of opportunity here and there to change minds. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we can bring those people over to our side and that's how our numbers grow and that's how we gain allies and that's how we become more normalized. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I don't understand why people can't understand that it's just normal. Like, it's really not hurting anybody, you know? Like, we're, right. not, like, we're just let us live. Okay? Right. <laughs> it's really not hurting anyone. Yeah. Like, how is that so hard to accept? I think people have, like, maybe something in themselves. That's usually what it is. You know? Oh, okay. That's usually what it is. Right? I mean, I will mm. say there is, I, I've never personally experienced this, but um, I, I have lots of friends and there's lots of stories of very conservative, very powerful men actively seeking out trans women mm -hmm. yeah. as escorts and mm -hmm. as prostitutes. And, um, you know, if, if, if the walls could talk. If the walls right, could talk. Then you I think yeah. The, yeah. the supporters of the conservative party would, their heads would spin. I, I really that. think so. Right. Yeah. And I believe it. Mm -hmm. You must have some stories. You, oh, yes. Do you care to share any of them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, She's like, do you care to spill the tea? You know, I do love some tea every now and then. Um, I think another thing that has to change just aside from acceptance is, um, and this goes for all women, mm -hmm. is the objectification of it all. Um, I, that's something that I never had to experience prior to transitioning, yeah. ever. Like growing mm -hmm. up, living 22 years, never once having to be, having to go through that. It's, it, it's like a switch flipped on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Immediately when I started presenting as female, it was like, I was just like a piece of me, you know? Yeah. And it was like, it was really alarming how how fast that happened right. and how, you know, as soon as there's a label, as soon as you've identified what it is, the party that used to find you attractive, all of a sudden just bye-bye. And the party that never once found you attractive is going, oh, huh, okay. Well, now maybe, oh, wow. you know? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of men just think of us as oddities and like, I don't know, like a fun little play thing. So I've experienced a lot of just really terrible manners and etiquette from men in public really? spaces at parties, especially yeah. in LA. And, you know, they think they can touch you. They think they can, you know, grab you by the neck and whisper in your ear. They think you, they can grab your waist and they can do all these things. And thankfully, I never really go anywhere alone. So I always have 
a pack. I mean, my friend group is like 13 people. It's 50, <laughs> deep. 50, yeah, it's deep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, we, and we are always like, the Olive Garden reservations are awful. <laughs> the never <laughs> end, end, ending oh my God. Six are up below. I table. love you yes. so much more yes. for yes. saying Olive Garden. Oh, yeah. Number one. Okay. Love. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm I'm lucky to have my chosen family yeah. to back me up and to right. be there. And there have been some times where, you know, some men have had to be escorted. Out, you know? Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's wild. Oh, God. Also, straight men just have the weirdest fetishes. Oh my God, wait. Like, Can you what? tell us some fetishes? <laughs> yeah, we love like, a fetish. We'll never name a name. I mean, we love talking fetish. <laughs> we love a fetish. God, I don't know if he's going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think a lot of straight men with trans women, it's very like mommy son mm-hmm. type thing, mm-hmm. which is very peculiar to me. Yeah. There are some that I'm not comfortable saying out loud on camera. <laughs> and, you know, when they come up, I'm always like, what? <laughs> like, really? No. Sorry, no. Like, how they want you to talk to them? How they want you to talk to them. Like, what they want you, you to, to do. do to them. And, like... Ugh. They're like, make me chicken noodle soup while you... <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Like, wood. That's fine. Yeah, I right. love you know, to make you soup. Cute. Like, I love a little made, you know, sexy yeah. m- made moment. Right. But, but is it more <laughs> like a dominating thing? Yeah. Oh, well, men... Or it's like a mommy very thing. very submissive. mm very submissive towards, well, not all men, I should say, because there's, I don't know, everybody's different. What I've experienced is that a lot of men just want to be <laughs> destroyed, <laughs> just <laughs> obliterated. <laughs> and just destroyed. It's just amazing. so bizarre. I don't know. Yeah. It's like, I've, I, it's, it is, it's like going through puberty and growing up again. I'm like going through all the yeah. stuff. Like, it's sure. so weird. Everything's new. Everything is new. And I'm like, thank goodness I have found a person who is sane and kind. Yeah. And amazing. Amazing and is not weird. It's not your son. <laughs> not yeah. my son. No, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, have you gotten more passionate about women's issues now? Mm-hmm. Because yeah, you're… I've always been passionate about women's issues. I think yeah. because I, I credit every part of who I am to women raising me both physically and on TV and film. Mm-hmm. I've, I've idolized women. I've, you know. Who was just... your idol growing up? Was it Sarah Michelle? <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved Sarah Michelle. I mean, I, honestly, this is so cliche, but Barbie was just. Mm-hmm. I was going to say you look a little bit like, um, <laughs> Mar- what is it, Margot Robbie? Really? Yeah, oh I just God. saw Barbie. <laughs> I was Thanks. actually thinking that. I was Cute. in the eyes. Cute. Yeah. Thanks. I love that. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I love her. Um, I love the original Barbie as well. Same. You yeah. She Freaking was love. Like, like incomparable. No, nobody could ever. And she taught me a lot about femininity. And mm-hmm. a, I learned, you know, how to braid hair on Barbie. And right. I learned how to put an ensemble together and design clothes. And, you know, I definitely had a lot of those weird Barbies, the Kate McKinnon. Yes, yeah. for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Barbie was a really big one. Obviously, my mom is very, I think, she has a very steady frame of mind when it comes to what women deserve. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just like a very, like, it, it's like a natural thing. It was just something that I knew. Right. Um, so definitely her. I I don't know. I loved every, like, leading lady in whatever cartoon or yeah. TV show, movie, like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz is my number one is all-time it? favorite. It's, just the, it's the perfect film. It's yeah. beautifully, visually beautifully done. The acting is great. It's campy. The message is like one of the most important messages, I think, in a movie of all time. Yeah. You know, you don't have to look any further than your own backyard to find home and yeah. find who you are. So, yeah, I don't know. Women have always been on the forefront. I think I I learned, I've learned a lot more about fighting for women's rights now and and how I've now being on the inside of it, I've understood how much worse it is than I thought it was. Yeah. So I think that's a really big goal of mine is to really get involved and have a voice on that side of things. And, you know, it's, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's gotten, like I said, in the past 50 years, 
has gotten a lot better, but it still has a long way to go. Yeah. 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 It does. I mean, especially recent years, it just seems like there's been a regression, you it know. Does, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like we're kind of starting over again it's in true. some areas. Um, it's a pendulum. Yep. Right. Pendulum swings. Yep. But isn't that just with the older generations? I feel like the youth is more awake than they've ever been. Yeah. I mean, I could yeah. be wrong, but it feels in our that experience, way. sure, in our experience. But mm-hmm. we live in Los Angeles, so that's a bubble. No, I, my mom. I mean, the high school that I went to, my mom is still doing costumes for them. Oh, oh my and, god, that's yeah, amazing! I mean, that is amazing. She's, you know, she's got her little costume minions that keep her company, and it's crazy because when I was in high school, there were no, there's no, I, no one had ever heard of trans. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a few gays, and you know, it was like all the theater art kids. And my mom said, now, like, our theater department, our theater troupe is outnumbered, like, queer and gender queer kids than the cis identifying ones. And they're, she's like, the entire school has, and this is Illinois. Yeah. Right. You know, so she's, it's just like, everyone is finding, discovering themselves and nobody cares. Right. The ones who get bullied in my school are the ones who used to do the bullying. That's right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I wonder if there is a connection between the creativity. We were talking about this earlier. What? About just being more open. The more creative you are, I feel like, like you said, the theater kids and stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, makeup. It's like queer and open and all of that in theater. And then a lot of times you find in sports, it's a little bit more macho. Oh, yes. But I'm wondering if there is a correlation between being open creatively to being open, yeah. whether it's with your sexuality or gender or any of it. I mean, mm-hmm. that kind of outlet is a lifesaver a lot of times. Right. Yeah. You know, like most of my friends were all art kids or were theater kids or involved in the arts in some way, shape or form, even yeah. if they were involved in sports, which, you know, a lot of them had the, their parents made them do. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> And a lot of them love to do. But yeah, I think, yeah, having an outlet like that and being able to, I, I just think being queer, there's magic in it. Mm-hmm. And there's there's something that is like, it's like a community. It's it's a community that, you know, nobody can really relate to unless you're inside of it. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, those those spaces, those creative spaces are often filled with these people. And so that's where you find connection and often the love for the creativity. Yeah, your tribe. Yeah. 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 When you spoke earlier that when you were young and they took you to a psychiatrist and they diagnosed you, <laughs> yeah, which is so crazy. How, what did your parents do with that information? Um, I think they just kind of let me, they just let me live, honestly. Um my uncle on my dad's side is gay. And so I think that he was a really big, he he provided a lot of information for my parents on mm-hmm. what being gay meant or being queer, you know, whatever. Queer was not even, queer was a derogatory term. Right. Back, right. back then, right. you know, so, but we've taken it back. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think they just, they've always known to listen to their kids. My mom told me, when I was like 17, she she shared with me this story of this time I was like four years old and I was playing with my little Barbies and there was a, a wall, like a room divider between me and my mom and my aunt. And they were doing something. I was playing with my dolls and my mom heard me say something long, along the lines of, why did God make me a boy? I'm not supposed to be a boy. I'm supposed to be a girl. Mm, wow. And she... My age, she, they, she told me this. She's like, I never told you this before, but it was something that I just remembered. And it was, it really stood out to me. And she's like, I, I thought about it all the time. And so I think, I don't know. It's like, mm-hmm. you just know. Yeah. And you just be a good parent. You let them, let them live. They're not going to hurt anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you let them live. Yeah. Well, straight guys may well, differ, maybe. but you know. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. No, but that's. It's just such a beautiful story and example yeah. of your experience with I mean, your parents. I mean, I owe a lot to where I am today. Yeah. And I think I owe a lot of that to my mom and my family. Um, but I also, I mean, I've in the past five years, six years living in L.A., I've learned way more than right. I could have ever imagined learning in 22 years in Illinois, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I really owe that to my 
my friends, my my chosen family, um, who, who go by the House of Avalon. That's oh, I are. love it. They're all from <gasps> Arkansas. Really? Yes. So they and must have some stories with they, their well, they upbringing have some or <laughs> crazy. Yeah, they, I would they've imagine been through shit, and they've yeah. been through shit. They their relationship goes back goes back like you know fifteen years almost. And so I'm a very new addition to this friend group, and they've kind of welcomed me with open arms, and they've provided it's it's like class was in session. Like it <laughs> yeah. felt like a whole new like pop culture was obviously a part of my life as a kid, but not nearly as much as it is for them and Mm -hmm, as it was for them. And, you know, I think TV kind of raised all of us in a way. Yeah. And, you know, in Mm -hmm. lots of different ways. And we just, we always try to pay homage to that. I think. I love that. Yeah. We've, we're just, we've been able to take our love for television and put it back into something that other people can absorb. Amazing. Yeah. That's so What is it? It's called Avalon TV. Mm-hmm. It's going to be on Wow Presents Plus. And um, Wow Presents Plus is the one that, like, World of Wonder produced RuPaul's Drag Race. They created right. it. And, you know, they're they're kind of expanding. They have this whole slew of new shows. And um, we are one of them. And we've been filming for the show for the past two years. Wow. And it's, there's so much heart that has gone into it. And it is just, like, all that TV that we grew up loving and we, you know, like like I said, raised us. We're kind of exploiting now. Nice. <laughs> like, you know, in a, in a it's, it's like an homage. Right. I love um, that. So the show is, it's six episodes for mm-hmm. the first season. Um, who knows about the second season? We'll see. <laughs> um, and it's just a culmination of every type of show, every type of show that we have loved. So it's kind of like you're flipping through channels and, you know. Uh-huh. You get a talk show here. You get um, following following me along and me and my girl Simone to Paris and Milan for Fashion Week. And how fun! You know, I think we've been able to create a lot of moments. I have a moment in the show um, later on in the season that is a very personal, mm. life altering change I'm I'm making and I I was lucky enough to have it filmed and documented really and oh wow it's like we we watched it back the other night and there we were all just crying oh my <laughs> it was gosh. so amazing and I like can't believe that I got to I'm I just can't wait to watch all of this back when we're all old and bitter yeah and you won't be bitter no we just will. old just old <laughs> just, <laughs> just old and yeah yanked yeah um, <laughs> but yeah, I, it's just, it's a special little thing that we've created. It's our little baby that we've created. And do I, you guys like reenact shows though? Yeah, a little bit. Oh my uh-huh. God, I would want to see you do like you, be uh, like one of the or like, oh. you know <laughs> so what I mean? Do, have, yeah, I, mean, I want to see you recreate. We, we yeah. do little skits here and there, which are fun. We play characters and, you know, um, we, we do. Did you ever watch Jackass? Yeah. yeah. So we have a version of Jackass. I That's love it. Amazing. Drag ass. I don't want to give. <laughs> I don't want to give away too much. Okay, no, okay, don't. Really don't. Special. Little it's so yeah. special, and it's like every time we're able to watch any of it, we're all like, all twenty of us in the living room, and we're just like, oh, can't believe this is happening. So, yeah, it's gonna be really, really special. That's so fun. exciting. Well, we can't. I can't wait to watch. I can't oh, either. And we. I just love that you came out here not really knowing. And yeah. look at what yeah. you've landed look what in. what you've done. Oh, my God. I think it's just, yeah, it's kismet. It, it is, is kismet. kismet. We're it big is. believers in that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to ask you two questions. <gasps> oh, okay. 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 Are we doing the usual? Sure. Okay. Usual. If you had to pick one song that plays every time you walk into a room, what is it? <sighs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That is so hard. It's going to af- it's going to have to be either Kylie Minogue or Oh wow, yeah. I love Gwen too. Mhm. She's a great of mine. Um hella good, no doubt. Great. Okay. Mm-hmm. Love it. Love no doubt. Great. Love. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. My name in it, so you know, it's weird. <laughs> What's that. your ultimate sandwich? <gasps> Ooh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> oh, um, I think, you know what? Honestly, there's this place called Gigiata. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. 
It's, no. Which is also Oh, yeah. Funny, is it like kind Giada? of a chain where it's like yeah. the little Italian type place? I think place? so. It's like There's G, one in Burbank. G and then A-T-T-A, I think. Okay. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Something like that. Um, and they have just the best fucking sandwiches. I love, um, I'm a really big pickle girl. I Me love too. Pickles. <laughs> love pickles. I just did that. Did you see that chamoy pickle on TikTok? No. no. It's did you? It's crazy. It's like a pickle that's been soaking in like red sugar juice, and you like oh, wow. hollow it out, put all kinds of candy. <laughs> it's so Ooh. nasty, but I did it. Um, I love a pickle, so I usually am. It's very like my sandwiches are very pickle, mustard, vinegar. Yes, a lot of that oil, pepper, salt. Um, I'm usually I'm I was a chicken kind of gal, but I've been leaning towards turkey for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why chicken has been stressing me out a lot lately. <laughs> it can do that. <sighs> yeah. It can do that. It's gross. Yeah. Like, it's sus. It is. When you I was know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You're like, I'm talking about I'm sandwiches. <laughs> I, if this picked that up, that's going to be so funny. <laughs> starving. Yeah. But chicken, like when you're when I was pregnant, chicken was my enemy. So I wouldn't eat it. Sense. so weird. Mm-hmm. It is weird. Like if it if chicken tastes like chicken. It's a texture thing. I me. won't it's eat it. It's a texture. Or if, it, texture or if it's like oh, kind of curly. You know what I mean? Curly. You know when it gets like. Ooh. You say that. Okay. Yeah. We're no. just gonna move past. It's yeah, it's making gross. me it's not <laughs> feel good. Um, Potato chips in it? Yeah. Oh crunch. yeah. Need a crunch. I need a crunch. Mm. I have to put chips That's in my sandwich. That's why the bread chew is really important to me. It's so like, important. It has to be like that hard. Like you, you want like a crusty like toast. Roll. Oh yeah. You want a French roll? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This has been. I just loved this whole conversation. Me too. And now I'm can't wait yeah. to have lunch. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, you are so stunning. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us oh and God, talking to us. And we're so, so excited much. for your show. Yes. yes so I excited. Yeah. Yeah. October 9th, Wow Presents Plus. Yes. Yay. Be great. Oh, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank Absolutely. You. Anytime. <laughs> Come back. I will. I'll be back. Come back. On my way. Hey. Dirty. <laughs> That's what I was going to do. We were on the yeah. same page that time. We finish each other's sandwiches. What you know about that, Rob? What you know about the dirty South? Okay. Okay, guys. When you guys get home at night in the dark, <laughs> do right. you run to your front door from the street if you're parking on the street? Or do you walk casually, not afraid? Okay, Rob um, runs. He yeah. darts. Uh, I walk. You walk casually. Yeah, casually. Olivia? I walk with a mission, <laughs> but I'm more afraid. I'm like afraid of raccoons. Like coyote. Yeah. What? I'm not afraid of like. They're, what do you think a raccoon is going to do to you? Well, I have had some hissing situations. Here we go. Here, we go. Here it comes. They hiss at you. Yeah. She saw in the news once. No. If <laughs> I were you, say. I'd be very afraid of the coyotes because your neighborhood has the most coyotes I've ever <laughs> seen <laughs> in my mine, life. I'm mine not has scared a lot. of them. Mine has a lot, too. We have, like, there's a pack at the end of our street that every night is howling, and they yeah. just Casually walk up and coyotes don't care about, especially not, in the city, like don't care about humans. Yeah, but I'm not scared of them only if my little dog is near. I'm not scared of them. I'm not really scared of a lot of <laughs> animals and things. Mm-hmm. I don't love snakes, but like we went on a Girl, Girl Scout field trip and I was holding them and they were on me and all that. And I'm fine with it. Just like running into one in nature doesn't Can we, yeah. there's this um, massage massage parlor oh, yeah. in California. Did we talk about this on no. the podcast no. already? No, no, he sent it to me and I told you about oh, it. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Continue. But big snakes and some, uh, it's a snake massage. <laughs> How is that a massage? Where like three, I think it's meant to help you get over your fear of snakes. Um, huh. Interesting. I used to like snakes when I was a teenager. Would you do it? No. I I mean, I don't need to do that. I'm not to the point where I'm so scared of snakes that I need to be cured. Mm-hmm. I don't want to run into them in nature, but I'm also fine. Like, I literally had one around my neck on Sunday, and I was fine. And it started in its neck, and yeah, it was like the tight. tongue that was like smelling my mm-hmm. neck. But I was fine. I was chill. These are like giant. Like, they're yeah. So yeah, I get it. I've held those yeah, too. Yeah. I don't need it like slithering all over me. Are you guys on next door? No. 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 
Okay. It's not helpful to be on next door. Here she goes. Yeah, but I are was, are you on next door, Olivia? Of course she is. I am in two cities. Okay. Oh. Oh. But here's that, here's what you're going to find interesting. You? Granite Bay. I stayed on the one in Granite Bay because I like to see the animals. The one in Los Angeles is like car break in. House burglary, armed package, robbery, package, package, package thieves. thieves. Like yeah. that I don't even like really mess with because I'm like, whatever. But the Granite Bay one is like, what animal is this? And it's like all these random animals. And I used to go do that and like I'd wake up in the morning and check my ring camera to see what kind of animals were What'd going see? through our yard. We had a lot of fox. I've seen them. Yeah. When I was there. Uh Uh-huh. And deer and no coyotes, really. But there was a bear on the side of the road that was killed. Like, (gasps) I know. What do you mean it was killed? He got killed. He got killed. What do you mean he got killed? By a car. Yeah, hit by a car. He got hit by a car. Side of the road. Big black bear. Got hit by a car. Yeah. I mean. I feel you'd take a lot for a car to take out a big bear. He might have had like a heart attack. Two bears of heart Or like liver down. cancer. He got hit by a car. That's sad. I know. I feel bad. I feel bad when anything gets killed. <laughs> we had a lot of roadkill there. Yeah. You did. A lot. We were like, in the woods. It was in the woods, so it was super dark. So you don't <laughs> see you don't see anything. This is Woodland Hills. Did you No. Did you <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever run over anything? Um, no, but I have obviously in your life, in my life. Yeah. Anything have you being bigger than a squirrel? I don't think so. That's good. You? I thought I had a cat once Ooh. in high school and I was mm. so traumatized. We went back and it wasn't there. So, uh, so I don't probably think I crawled it. off somewhere and died. No, I don't think I hit. I thought I hit it, but like it wasn't there. You know what I mean? It was like at night and it was just scary and I was traumatized. But I was like in high school. It's scary. I saw <sighs> a deer get hit out. in front of me once Ooh. and then it like flung in front of my car and it like looked, I made eye contact with it. <laughs> and I was like, on Laurel Canyon. What? Yeah, it was absolutely traumatizing. Because it's like I watched the life go out of it. It was like, Looked in my eyes and and then died and died. Yeah, it was a huge freaking fuck? deer. I pulled over and we waited and like whoever was there called someone. It was a huge deer on the whole canyon and got killed. That's horrible. It was really bad. It's like Tommy Boy. I yeah. told you about my good friend like a month ago that was riding his motorcycle. Yes, up yeah. near Lake Tahoe. It's horrible. His family was in the car behind him because he was just taking the bike home. Uh, his wife and two kids, and a deer came out, yeah. and he hit it and flew like 40 feet off the bike. Bike exploded, and he like broke his arm, a bunch of ribs, mm. scars all over his face, was like completely out, had to be airlifted. And he, I saw him like a month later. He came down to L.A. and he was okay. like a couple scars, but he's... But his family watched it all happen. Yeah, his family watched. That's so effed up. I have a photo. He has a photo that someone took. Mm-mm. Like, bike's still on fire. He's laying unconscious. You like this part of the story. So, there was a firefighter. <laughs> <Not> so. <laughs> there was a firefighter that was, like, was behind them when it happened. A, like, firefighter EMT that oh, wow. got out and helped them. And they became, like, friends with this guy and his mm-hmm. wife after... And um, they told them, they're like, for some reason, he just wanted to go to the lake that day. We never go to the lake on those days. And then we were there and like normally we would have stayed the whole day. But for some reason, he was like, let's just go home. And the timing of all of that put them there. (laughs) That gives me the chills. I love that story. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Felt like a story you guys would wow. like. I have the chills. Yeah. That happened with Jeff. Do you remember that when I was in Granite yes, Bay? I do. We, I went to this little coffee shop by his work that I'd never been to. Never. Ever. And I was like, I took my computer with me because I wanted to do writing. And I was mm-hmm. like, I just want to get out of the house. I'm going to go to like this cute little coffee shop. I called him. I'm like, if you have like five minutes to come say hi, I'm across the street at 
this coffee shop. I sit down and he's late. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like he said he was going to stop by. He didn't know if he could. Mm -hmm. So I was about to pack up and leave. And he walks in and he looks like just completely shook. And I'm like, what is going on? He's like, I parked my car and I was walking in to meet you and he was in scrubs and someone ran out going, doctor, doctor. He walked in, they ran him into the sushi restaurant and there was a woman in cardiac arrest and he revived her. He literally got her to breathe, gave her mouth to mouth, whole thing. She ended up living and he stayed in contact with the family and they, they were like, the hospital said, like, if you weren't there that minute, she would have died. Isn't that crazy? That minute. Oof. Crazy. It's fucking crazy. Head just got chills. Yeah. Your head only? Yes, my head. <laughs> it's like we never know the one decision know. we make that was like, I'm just going to go. And like, if I, I know, mm -hmm. I know. Always, always think about that. So does Rob. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's not a second that goes by that I'm not. So thinking you're not about, thinking like wow about divine intervention. But I even take it a step further of not just just you're, you're in your third hairdo of this. <laughs> yes, <post>. I am. <laughs> <laughs> not just that. Okay, so yes, that was their experience. She came back to life. This woman lived because he was there at that minute. But I also connected to oh shit, I'm supposed to write. If I hadn't have decided to write that day, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been there. And so I was like, is that connected? Yeah. You know? I love when all that shit happens. Right? We live for that we shit. We live for that shit. That's my rock. Yeah. I really love this story. <laughs> we do. But he all the gets time. it. He because he's sharing it. I similar. I he mean, I told it. you guys about my friend that I was on the cruise with me. The cruise? We went on this cruise to Hawaii when I was like 20 with my family. Yeah. It's all like old people on this cruise. Yeah. And it was to my all the different islands. Time. And there was, I ran into this kid that I used to play soccer with that I hadn't talked to. You have told us this, but yeah. Hadn't talked to him in like again. 10 years probably. Right. So he was the only other kid my age there. So we hung out the whole week on this cruise. And then like a week or two after the cruise ended, he died in his sleep. That's right. right. I mean... It's just so weird. And like what, like a cruise. Yeah. yeah, like the most random, but you got that time with him. But what do you, I'm curious, what do you take from that? Yeah. I could see you being like, I didn't even like remember this guy. And then they brought him into my life and then he just died. Like I could see you going down Going that. pessimistic? Maybe? Yeah. I mean, no, I see that as like a treasured last moment to get. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. But it did, it did it bring you any new gratitudes or did it make you want to hold on to people tighter? Because I can see losing someone at that age is. Yeah. No, I mean, it just. He's it, like, no. <laughs> it made me realize like how fragile things are and that mm -hmm. it could happen at any point. Yeah. I remember the first like peer or whatever that died when I was, I don't know, 14 or 15. He was my boyfriend in junior high, but we, this was after. I wasn't with him. This was like when I was in high school. The weirdest part is my best friend from kindergarten. We were best friends from kindergarten until, I don't know, let's say second grade. And then she moved to Big Bear. At the time of his death, he was dating my best friend from kindergarten, who I hadn't spoken to in so long. Mm. But she happened to have been dating the same guy that was my boyfriend in seventh grade. Oh, but when weird. I was in ninth grade, he was killed. By what? What? It's so bad. He like he got his, I mean, his throat slit. What? Yeah. Why? Was like, you know. A, I know I knew this, but I don't think I knew yeah, how. Yeah, it was like a kerfuffle with like gang members or something, you know. Um, and yeah, he was killed. Like that. He was fifteen. Speaking of other traumatic stories. <sighs> this is a feel good. I hope yeah. people, you know, driving home from work appreciate have, these. Well, you know what? They're going to appreciate anyone they can hold on to today, right? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Less happy of a story. Oh, but uh, okay. Less happy of, than that? I mean, <laughs> not, any, uh, any, not any happier. Uh, my friend was in town playing some shows last week and I had lunch with him. And the night before, they were playing at the Ace 
theater at Ace Hotel. And he like walked out to walk around to go into the venue because they're staying at the hotel in there. It's downtown LA. There's already like a line of people for the show. And there was just like a man lying in the street. Mm. And he was like, well, this is LA. It's probably an unhoused man. It wasn't that out of the ordinary. Right. But apparently like 30 seconds prior, he had just jumped from the top of the building. <gasps> and oh my God. everyone in the line. I was not line, expecting that. Everyone in the line had seen I it. I laugh when I get oh, nervous. God. I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing yeah. at that. Mm. Everyone saw it? Uh, people in the line saw it. He was like, if, if I had walked out 30 seconds later, I would have seen him fall. That breaks Apparently, he was maybe being chased by police or someone mm. is what story came back as but that's so traumatizing too for the people that witnessed that yeah. and saw him how do you that i is, mean that's these are horrible stories that we're telling right we're now. gonna have to like lighten the mood this is life right these are horrible stories and we're gonna change the mood yeah i don't feel right you will some let's answer some questions Oof, I've, got some Wait, I've got some questions i've got a i've got i've got a good starting question what I am a 26-year-old female, and my husband, 28 male, sent a text to his coworker saying he would suck on her breasts. Oh. Say that again? <laughs> like, I would if I had to, or I would like to. Wait, say it again? Sorry. What was the question? I'm going to read the whole Okay, thing. okay. Just, Sorry. I just don't know how this works still. Sorry. <laughs> there's a catchy headline, <laughs> and then there's more details that oh, will yeah. unfold. <laughs> As I read the question. We're like, wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. My husband and I have been married for two years. We've been together for five years in total. Recently, we attended a baby shower. There was a professional photographer there, and it took a few days before we got our pictures. Once the pictures were ready, they were sent to his phone. I asked my husband if I could borrow his phone to post the pictures on my Instagram. While I was on his phone, I intended oh to click the photo icon, but clicked the phone icon instead, which was right next to it. Mm. This opened up his call log, and I saw that back-to-back -back he had gotten calls from his coworker, a uh, 26-year-old female. We're mm. going to call her M Okay. for this. Uh, this raised a red flag, so I went to their messages and started scrolling. Majority of the text messages were normal, talking about work and life, but I saw one message. M was basically venting to him that at work someone had commented on her breastfeeding breasts, calling them saggy and deflated, which made her feel upset. There was no following message, though, like if his response was he deleted. Because he deleted it. Oh. I go through his deleted text and I see his response. How do you see deleted texts? I think you can just look at deleted text. What? I didn't know that. My husband responded, not deflated, just not as firm as before, LOL, for obvious reasons. I'll still suck on them, though. <gasps> my heart dropped, and my stomach immediately thought he cheated on me. I walked over to him and threw the phone at his face. I yelled at him, you're cheating on me with M? He tried calming me down and explaining himself. He said he didn't mean it, and that's how everyone talks in the office. And it's not constant every day, but dirty jokes are made here and there, and everyone just laughs and walks away. Mm. He said he felt comfortable enough joking around with her like that because he knows one, she knows he's not serious, and two, she doesn't want him in that way either. I ask him, if you're not serious, why delete the message and hide it? He responds, because after I sent it, I realized it went too far. In the office, we say stuff like that, but I've never said something direct, like I'll suck your breasts before. <laughs> <laughs> it was too much, I deleted it, so you wouldn't see it and become upset. Um, I mean, I will say, he could have deleted the whole thread if it was really shady. Yeah. I don't have any proof that he's ever tried anything with her. All I have is their word, and I'm leaning towards believing them, but it's still driving me crazy. I think it depends. I don't know. You go ahead. Well, I will say, mm -hmm. if it was <laughs> shady, he would have deleted the whole text thread. He deleted the one text. She didn't say anything in response to it? See, my I'm like, what was the... I don't think so. I mean... That was he took it too far. It's an right, inappropriate, right. absolutely inappropriate response. He deleted it. Wait, did he delete it? But like, so sh the girl wouldn't see it either. Yeah, he deleted it so his wife wouldn't see it. But I no, mean, no, 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 he didn't edit it. He didn't yeah, edit and no, take it away. Right. Okay, so he just deleted it so his wife wouldn't see it, which is sus. But also, he didn't delete the whole conversation if that was the only thing. 
I, I'm leaning towards believing him. What about you? I think it depends on the person's personality. Right. I think that there are certain friends that I have that are guys that would make yeah. jokes like, don't, we have a rep, we have yes, a way of speaking. To, yeah, where he would be like, you're such a dirty little slut. And I'm like, I love it. Like, it's just <laughs> jokes. That's how she talks. <laughs> you have friends that that's how you talk to one another? That's how she talks. They're a friend. I do. But it's like just jokes. Heterosexual male men? Yeah, but it started a long time ago. What, if Jeff saw that text message, would he care? I don't think he would give a shit because I think he knows, he knows that it's just, he would do that on a group text with his wife. He'd be like, you're such a little slut. And I'd be like, uh, you know. Well, I guess that's so different. It's a that's personality than, thing. But yeah. calling you a little slut's different than I want to suck on your breasts. He didn't say I want to. He, he said, said I'd I still would. suck on I'd him. I'd still what suck on him. So I'm saying if a friend that I am friends with said that to me, I wouldn't see it as sexual. I would see it as a joke. Like, okay, yeah, they may be a little saggy, not, but I'd still suck them. It'd be like, okay, great. However, if Jeff said that to someone, that would not work for me because that's yeah, not right. his personality. So you put yourself in the wife No, but it's position. also not his personality. Right. right. So you it depends like on if, his personality if, is what you're saying. Huh? It depends on his personality. It depends on their personality. Do you, I would still be pissed. It's still right. inappropriate and you don't joke like that because it's a flirty joke and that's not cool. Like, yeah, in this scenario though, I don't think it's like, oh, he's definitely cheating on no. her with that. I don't either. But it still raises the question, maybe he shouldn't be making jokes like that to women, especially right. at work. And clearly she's breastfeeding. She's like, you know. Yeah. Assume, actually, who knows? Oh, but God. Even, but like if <laughs> she's on. breastfeeding no. <laughs> and they're both taken and they've got a kind of comfort zone with each other. I don't know. If you and I were texting, I would never make a comment about Because you wouldn't, right. nor would Jeff. That's right. what I'm saying. But we have friends. Is, is there a double standard there where you are okay with someone saying that to you, but would be mad if Jeff said that to someone else? Or it's just because that's, if you were married to a, the type of guy that would say that, you'd be fine with it too. Correct. If I was married to the type of guy that that was their personality, I'd be like, eh, he's just being him. Yeah. I think you got to know your man. I think you got to know their, your partner. And if it's their personality and they really are joking, I think you're going to know that. It's a mosquito. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were watching Steve. I'm like, what is yeah. he looking at? <laughs> no, it's a mosquito. I, am I wrong? No, I don't think you're wrong. I think there's certain people where it's, it, I think it really depends on how it made the woman feel. You yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it sounds like he owned up to it and apologized and all of that. Right? Yeah. It, yeah, it's just whether or not he would have owned up to it had he not been caught. Right. And, he wouldn't have. And also, can, well, her being like, I accidentally clicked his phone icon. Not like buying that, that stuff. I don't saw really the buy call that. and then went into the messages. It's bullshit. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. look, if you have a feeling about something, you have to look into that too. And obviously she was right. There was something inappropriate. So there's something to listen to there too. I thought the same thing. Yeah. I was like, that's a great explanation like, for looking at someone's phone. Right. Because like if you go to your home, I mean, the phone well, it depends on the way it's organized. That's true. Or different kinds of phones. <laughs> I'm not trying to shame her for looking not at, at his all. phone. Not at all. Not at all. No, I'm saying she that. followed her intuition and she wasn't wrong. But I do think certain people carry more weight. I think if you said that to someone, that would be. It would <laughs> That's carry. so out of the norm that it'd be like something's up. Well, and who it's said to as well. That's what I mean. Right. I think that all of those factors need to be looked at right. and the relationship right. between the two and all of that. And like if you said that to Olivia, I would be like, oh, just another day. Just another day. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't even <laughs> land on us. We'd be like, oh, oh yeah, there, yeah. He is. there he is. For the record, that's how you guys talk to me, not me talk to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're always like, I would suck sure. your titties. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> every That's day how you talk to we, everybody we meet to rob every time he walks in the door yep. <laughs> yeah well you did make me wear a dress today yeah oh that's not today steve mosquito dude i gotta get it oh, well i mean if that was just like a oh that was just an easter egg no it's over here get it rob get it get it get, get it. it get it you guys want another one? Okay, one more and then one more and then done. we got a motor. 
All right. What do I do? I, 25-year-old male, hate my gift that my 22-year-old female girlfriend got mm. for me. Mm-hmm. My girlfriend, 22 female, three years, just got me a kalimba for my 25th birthday. I was very disappointed by it. What's a kalimba? I don't know. What's a panini? What's a kalimba? <laughs> What's a panini? It's an instrument. Have you ever seen that video? Oh. With... It's an instrument. That... Okay. It's an instrument? She likes listening to extremely romantic slow songs, and I don't. In fact, when we were driving and she plays it, I ask her to not play them, and we could just talk instead. She knows I don't like the music one bit, but I don't mind her listening to it. I just don't want to listen to it myself. We just recently started long distance, and she had to move cities for education. I stayed back for work, and while I was opening it, she was on the call. She says that she's always wanted one, but couldn't justify buying it, and if I don't like it, I could give it to her. <laughs> Then she, asked, for yeah. then she asked me to learn to play it. So when she comes back for Christmas, I can play it for her. The note she sent me said, it's a good gift. It's a good <laughs> gift. It's a good gift, Buns. For me. That's what she calls me. I'm going to do that to you. Here it is. It's a good gift. She's been in a relationship with me for three years. She knows I love reading history. I do bird watching, wildlife photography. Oh, he's fucking wild. Carve and whittle wood. And I'm oh. learning how to sculpt with clay. Told her I love... Holler. I love the gift and I was super thoughtful <laughs> not to hurt her feelings around my birthday with an argument, but I really didn't like it and I don't see myself in it one bit. Oh, this, this is a bigger final, issue. Yeah, okay. final, yeah, yeah. I just got her her first vibrator for her birthday when she opened it today. She fucking it loved kind it. Of slipped out of my mouth and said, That's how you give an awesome gift. <gasps> right after she tested it out on the call with me, she picked it up and it had been mad at me about taunting her and not liking her gift. What should I do? Mm. Well, he has to be honest. This is a bigger issue because this is right. like, you don't know me. <laughs> the, the cookie monster. Yeah, you got me crackers. You got me crackers. That's the biggest issue, right? She just wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really, I'm not, uh, here's some hardcore judgment. Mm -hmm. That's really selfish and a weird self-centered gift. I've had right. gifts like that. You have? Yeah. You've given gifts like that? No. I've you received, got like the pizza when you got me, and you were like, I just love pizza. No, oh, Rob <laughs> needs his pizza. Oven. We need to give you your pizza. And we do like pizza. We really do. We yeah, do like a lot. I know. You really want me to make you pizza? No, yeah. I was given a dog that I didn't pick that's out. True. And it was came, and they named it themselves and was like, here you go. Yeah. I was like, interesting. <laughs> yes, you did go through that. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. Totally. Right? Yeah. So, but I, some people aren't good at giving gifts. Like, that's the other. I mean, this one seems a little uh, obvious what's, what's happening. Yeah. That she just wanted it and bought it for herself. So, but some people. But it's like, the same thing when someone's giving. like, I'm going to order us dinner. Here's a pork chop covered in mushrooms. I don't eat pork chops and I hate mushrooms. Did that okay. happen to you? Yes. yes. Mm. It is I'm the sorry. cookie. It is the cookie. It's getting the, the cookie monster the crackers. crackers. That's it's, that's a big issue. It's an issue. Here's the thing, though. It it can be trained out of someone unless they're a narcissist and they cannot see past themselves. Mm -hmm. If it's just self centeredness, you can train someone, teach them what you want, and, and talk it, to them well, about give that. Well, give them a lift. Give them a gift. Yeah. Lift. I'm like, well, just pick. Yes. Pick from this. But also, and great. I think. A thoughtful gift, no matter how small, even if it's like a handwritten thing, but like if it's thoughtful and really like my nachos, like your nachos, you know, and it's and my, my reading, like my cracker barrel. Yeah. Like that speaks to my heart. It I, doesn't have do, to be fancy. I do think that there's types of people, though, that just can't Aren't like thoughtful, can't like execute a thoughtful gift like that. I think, I think, that, that's, I think okay. that's true. Okay. And that's totally fine. Okay. But then they should. Be like, uh, give, give me let me know yeah. what you like, what you want, whatever. Right. Or how are they showing up in other areas? Like Jeff, well, yeah, I don't think Jeff isn't leave. a huge gift giver. <laughs> I don't but think you he, should leave your partner because they're bad at giving gifts. No. Right. <laughs> like you can, if, as long as I they're showing up in another way. I love giving gifts better than getting gifts mm -hmm. personally. I mean, it depends on who they're from, I guess. I do like gifts from certain people. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I prefer to give. Like you, Rob, you like giving gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like it when I can crack it, but then sometimes it's really hard. Rachel is the hardest person in the world to get gifts for. That is not true. You're hard to get gifts for. I am not hard to get gifts for. 
I think she's not hard to get gifts for. No? no. Mm-mm. Hmm. I'm not. Did you like your gift this year? What'd you get her? Oh my she God. doesn't know. Earrings and salt. <laughs> so, <laughs> but they're, they're like really, because she really loves cooking. I do. And they're I like, love a, it's like a gifts. variety of salts. I love cooking gifts. Yeah. Yeah. And dope earrings. I love dope earrings. I do. I love dope earrings. Okay. They're a little heavy. Well, I've, we, I've noticed you haven't worn yeah, them. Yeah, well, I was going to ask Should we why return I them? I don't know. Did you try them on? No, I didn't try them you on. You know when earrings are really heavy, they're harder to wear. Then we got to return them. I'll Let's return them. them. Because they're, they're dope. not cheap. Mm-mm. I know. They're Mm-mm. fucking dope. Yeah, I think we should return them. I'll Let's try them that. again. I want you to try them and see if it's I just... I will. I'm a little sensitive to weight. I am too. Yeah. I won't wear them if I they're know, heavy. But I love them. I don't want to give them up. But they are heavy. That didn't even occur to me to try them on. Yeah. Okay. I want to return them. Because well, they were I love them though. Yeah. Yeah, but if I'll you're try, not going to wear them, you should you to have see, something I want you to see if you think they're heavy. Okay. <laughs> I think it really matters if you think they're heavy, though. I know, but I want, I just, it's just my brain. You, you my just, any decision in my life does not happen without going through Olivia. <laughs> I think we should return them. <sighs> Hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll okay. assess. Do you know whose earrings these are? <laughs> Jeff's mom's who passed <gasps> away. Oh, you're wearing Maddie's Yeah, earrings. I'm wearing Maddie's. Earrings. That's so sweet. And they feel right. They don't feel too heavy. No, they're perfect. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Shepard will just look at Jeff. Like last night, we were just sitting on the couch and he just points to him and he goes, His mama died. <laughs> oh my God, Shepard. I'm like, It's true. And he's like, His mama died. And Shepherd. we'll just keep pointing at him and saying it. I'm like, Yeah, yeah, we got to be really sweet to him. His mom died. And he'll be like, she died? And we'll be like, yeah. But he just will randomly, like, he does that. Who does he always talk about whose mom died? Mitch McConnell. Yes. <laughs> what? I haven't told you that. Yeah, you have. So good. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, Nicole was on the phone with him, and she's like, how's Mitch McConnell's mom? And he's like, she died. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. So laughing good. at Mitch McConnell's mom. Too. I'm sure she died a really long time yeah, ago. Yeah, I guess he is old yeah i don't well we don't know that you guys. no we looked it up oh you Nicole did. and kevin looked it oh, up they did because they were like i wonder if she's really yeah yeah she died okay. a long time ago. Okay. okay so he's just assuming this old man's mom died yeah he's just like he looks sad i think his mom died because that would make me sad you know let's all take a moment for all of the deceased that we have now covered in this <laughs> post <laughs> yeah, there's about 11 people that have I died mean, <laughs> that we've discussed what in this is post. happening Seriously, though. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm laughing. Oh, my God. But all of I mean, it's crazy. We've never, never in the history of podcasts have this many. It's because the veil is thin. The yeah. veil is thin. The veil is thin and Steve is not leaving. Yeah, He's at funny. your house. Okay. Yeah, Anyways. We got plenty at my house. It's fine. All, Any heel house. All respect and love to the... <laughs> <laughs> you fucking jumped off a building. <laughs> you fucking got his throat slit. His mom fucking died. <laughs> died in his sleep. He died at 20 in his sleep. years old. This 22 year old died in his sleep. Mitch McConnell's mom's dead. <laughs> Jeff's mom's dead. 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 Jeff's mom's dead. <laughs> Oh my god. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for listening this week. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. Phew. <laughs>